what would happen if oxygen supply in the brain is stopped. The brain corresponds to just 2% of the total body weight. But, it uses a whopping 20% of the total oxygen supply in the body. Blood vessels carry oxygen to the brain. Without oxygen, the brain will not be able to perform its basic functions. The brain, with the help of oxygen, metabolizes glucose to supply power to the neurons. These neurons control total activities, like conscious functions like thought and planning, and even unconscious functions like breathing, heart pumping and digestion. Without oxygen brain dies, as it cannot provide sufficient power to its cells. So, how long a brain can survive without oxygen? The answer depends on the levels and types of oxygen deprivation. There are two distinct types of oxygen deprivation. Anoxic brain injury takes place when our brain is totally left without oxygen, due to sudden choking, strangulation, cardiac arrest, or other kind of sudden injuries. Hypoxic brain injury, on the other hand, is a result of partial oxygen deprivation. Often, the real effects of these two types of injuries are similar in nature, and so, they are often used interchangeably. Brain can easily recover from oxygen deprivation of few seconds. Therefore, child holding breath playfully, or a fighter choked during WWF wrestling, or a diver spending extra few seconds underwater, will not cause any brain damage. Complete oxygen deprivation effects depend on several factors, like individual's cardiovascular or brain health, as well as the oxygen saturation in the blood before deprivation. Though, the extent of injury varies from person to person, in general, the damage starts occurring from one minute into the timeline. During 30 to 180 seconds of complete oxygen deprivation, the concerned person generally loses consciousness. Beyond one minute, brain cells slowly start dying. Three minutes into the timeline, neurons tend to undergo more widespread damages, and that may lead to permanent brain damage, in most of the circumstances. Past five minutes, the probability of death becomes a strong possibility. Around 10 minute mark, the brain is theoretically alive, but in a coma, and permanent brain damage is almost impossible to avoid. Beyond 15 minute mark, survival is almost impossible. Here, we are excluding the cases where trained divers are able to extend the timeline under special conditions. Doctors can identify the early signs of deprivations through the symptoms like changes in heart rate, reduced blood circulation in hands and feet, some body parts turning blue, tendency to faint, lack of awareness, and inability to perform complex tasks. It's a life-threatening and serious condition, which needs quick medical attention. With appropriate physical therapy, our brains often learn to compensate for the damaged areas. So, even if injuries are severe, it's still worth a committed therapeutical effort 